You'll ruin your life somehow, some way. It is everywhere. It can pass into all the cells and tissues of your body. It was a very progressive decline in my aspirations. Alcohol is normalized in our society. You want to figure out something that you're doing with your life that's worth not getting drunk and screwing up. I drank in search of happiness and in search of a lifestyle that I thought would bring me to happiness. Um, it didn't, and I woke up one morning going, wow, I've drank a lot, but I'm still not happy. What's that about? I recall in high school, the motivational speakers would come to my school and say, don't do drugs. But absent from those talks was any reference to alcohol. Alcohol got introduced to my life. You might say, well, why do people drink too much? It's like, if you like alcohol, that's a stupid question. It is ingrained. It's the social glue that sticks everything together. And my mom was chiming in with, it's way bad. You don't want to do it. You don't want to end up like that. Over three million people worldwide will die this year to alcohol-related causes. From baby showers, christenings, freshers week, weddings, parties, funerals, barbecues, celebrations, and everything in between. That. So she's in my ear making it sound really logical to not do it, and I'm watching people act the fool who are doing it. We've been brainwashed into thinking that there are just two types of drinkers. There are those at rock bottom, alcohol dependent, and there's everybody else, happy social drinkers, who are just occasionally a bit lightweight and can't hold their beer. You do stupid things when you're drunk. You hurt yourself, you, you compromise your health. It's really hard on the people around you. You tend to turn into a liar and it screws up your life. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but it's pretty fun. Yeah, well it is, but you need something better than that. Uh, and I burned every bridge that I had, virtually unemployable. My options had been eliminated. My life was eviscerated. My family didn't want anything to do with me. I'd lost my friendships. I had no way forward. In fact, the reality is very different. It's a spectrum. I would highly recommend you get off the booze elevator before it hits rock bottom. Uh, and I just continued to dig that hole deeper and deeper and deeper until one day I had that moment that you hear with people who are in recovery, that, that moment of clarity where I realized I just couldn't live this way any longer. My elevator had you know, gone down to the bottom floor and, uh, and the, and, and I met my pain threshold, you know, back to the, 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 this thesis around pain. Like I had, um, reached a point where I could no longer tolerate the pain of my current situation. And the fear, the pain associated with the fear of change was eclipsed by the pain that I was feeling in that moment. And that's what motivated me to change. I went to a treatment center, uh, where I lived for a hundred days, which is pretty long time to be in a rehab center. And I did that because I knew if I didn't get this right, that my life was done, you know. And so I took that opportunity seriously. I recognized that despite the fact that I think I'm a smart guy, my best thinking had me uh, literally institutionalized. And that if I couldn't get a grasp on how to live and develop some new skills and, and a new toolbox for how to approach my life, that um, that I was going to end up in jail or I was going to kill somebody else or myself. You know, now we're about a year and a half later and it's, and my life has been, has turned around uh, immeasurably. It's a wonderful thing. And I, and I say to anybody watching or, or listening to this, that, you know, it's, um, that there is a lot of pressure on young people, not to drink necessarily, but to find happiness through going out and getting mashed <laughs> like like and and i'm sh and that's fun and you have a good time and good luck to you but if it doesn't work for you and if you keep waking up going hmm i don't seem to be having nearly as good time as most of my friends uh then you know then think about it it doesn't have to be something you do is what i all i'd say to people and what's better isn't being straight and 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 not making mistakes it's like that's all prohibition in some sense what's mm -hmm. better is no you need an adventure man you need to get out there and have something to do and, and something worth waking up for. And you need, that's the substitute for the addiction. Excessive drinking is, is considered 13 or more drinks a week. If you have three glasses of wine every night, which would be splitting a bottle of wine with your friend, your, mm -hmm. your, your husband, whatever, uh, you, you, you fall in that category. An alcoholic is defined as someone basically where they, they can't stop once they start. Often they'll drink until they pass out. Wow. Or they'll drink to where they become dysfunctional. They become the kind of person everyone goes, my God, you're slurring your words. You're not safe to drive. Mm -hmm. They get DUIs. They, their boss has trouble like you need, right. need to quit coming to work hungover but an excessive drinker is 13 if you drink six 
drinks a week. If you're a woman, you have a 40% higher incidence of breast cancer. If you drink up to 10 drinks, it goes up to 70% higher chance of getting that's incredible. breast cancer. So just the health benefits. One of the things that's coming out of, of England is research that if you stop drinking for 30 days, just cut back. And what they're finding is people are living longer. It's clearing out their kidneys. It's, it's uh, arterial uh, sclerosis is being reversed. Mm. Um, you know, people are having all kinds of um, uh, more energy. They're losing weight. Most of the things that we do that are addictions are to numb out our anxiety, to numb out our pain, to numb out the memories of trauma, to numb out our discomfort around being people in a social, being with people in a social <coughs> situation, the fear that I won't have fun, I won't be interesting, I'm more relaxed, I'm more fun, you know, uh, and that's right. the big myth is I won't have a fun life. There's something about my mom. She has a way of like making it sound like a really bad f idea. And my, I had a lot of aunts and uncles and um, second cousins and stuff that were all alcoholics, drug addicts. Um, and watching them, I thought, ooh, that is not a good look. Real, like some real white trashy stuff. Yeah. And so I was just like, no. And my mom was chiming in with, it's way bad. You don't want to do it. You don't want to end up like that. So she's in my ear making it sound really logical to not do it. And I'm watching people act a fool who are doing it. So I just thought, yeah. When I thought I was going to have kids, yeah. I wanted to ask my mom, like, you were so good. Like, neither my sister or I ever got into trouble. We never did drugs. We never drank. No trouble, nothing. My sister, to this day, is like the most straight, and narrow person you've So when you tried it, what was it like for you? Like, yeah. Oh, alcohol made me feel like I was suppressing the urge to dance on the table. It is awesome, and I love it the most. I just don't let myself do it because it's not in, it's not congruent with wanting to live forever. There's just too many downsides, but that shit is fun. So like, I get how people get in trouble. Yeah. I just don't have an addictive personality. So for me, it was easy to be like, yeah, this is fun, but I can weigh it against the disadvantages and there are way too many. Unlike a lot of substances and drugs that actually attach to the surface of cells, to receptors, alcohol actually has its own direct effects on cells because it can really just pass into those cells. And the fact that it can pass into so many organs and cells so easily is really what explains its damaging effects. Ethanol produces substantial damage to cells because when you ingest ethanol, it has to be converted into something else because it is toxic to the body. And if you thought ethanol was bad, acetaldehyde is particularly bad. Acetaldehyde is poison. It will kill cells. It damages and kills cells and it is indiscriminate as to which cells it damages and kills. That's a problem, obviously. And the body deals with that problem by using another component of the NAD biochemical pathway to convert acetaldehyde into something called acetate. Acetate is actually something that your body can use as fuel. And that process of going from ethanol to acetaldehyde to acetate does involve the production of a toxic molecule, right? Again, acetaldehyde is really toxic. If your body can't do this conversion of ethanol to acetaldehyde to acetate fast enough, well, acetaldehyde will build up in your body and cause more damage. So it's important that your body be able to do this conversion very quickly. And the place where it does that is within the liver. And cells within the liver are very good at this conversion process. But they are cells and they are exposed to the acetaldehyde in the conversion process. And so cells within the liver really take a beating in the alcohol metabolism events. It is the poison, the acetaldehyde itself, that leads to the effect of being inebriated or drunk. I think most people don't realize that, that being drunk is actually a poison-induced disruption in the way that your neural circuits work.